All right, so what we're going to do today is look at the physiological effects of foam rolling and stretching. So first what we're going to do is basically a repeat of a pilot study that we did uh, about a year or two ago on foam rolling. So what we're going to do is check strength of glute medius, push, very good, and we'll see that he's got 43 foot-pounds of force. As we're kind of reviewing this, he's going to just foam roll 10 times the IT band. So we're testing facilitation of the gluteus medius after rolling the IT band. So we're going to see what happens to that muscle output after just 10 back and forth on the foam roller. So here we go again and push and good. And we see that he went down to 27.4 foot pounds. Now that we've seen what foam rolling can do to neuromuscular facilitation or force output of a muscle, let's take a look at what just a conventional stretch will do. So what we're going to do is test output of rectus femoris, push, good, and we're going to see that it's about 35.9 before we do anything. We're going to roll over, we're just going to do a quick 10 second stretch of the quads, tell me when. So easy 10 second stretch, typically what your normal person would do before they run or work out or whatever. Yeah. Roll back on your back. And let's see what happens now. Yeah. And push. Okay. And relax. And we go down to 28.1. So there are a couple quick demonstrations on what happens when we try to force muscles to relax. We actually get them to relax, which means they're inhibited. So they can no longer fire normally, which is why you get more range of motion and relaxation or decreased muscle spasm. Uh, but as we've seen, what happens is it decreases the muscle's ability to work, increases neuromuscular inhibition, which negatively impacts your patient's ability to re uh, recover from injury and to avoid future injury. So what we need to do now is implement thought processes and strategies that actually increase motion while it's increasing facilitation and strength.